Let's talk about Nick Smith Jr. Welcome to another SEC NBA draft profile. This time we're looking at a Nick Smith Jr. out of Arkansas. We're going down ESPN's best available list at each SEC player and putting together a draft profile for them. Uh, I'm David from Hoop Southbound. Please, as always, if you like these type of videos, like this video and subscribe to this channel. All right, so before we talk about Nick Smith Jr.'s draft profile, we need to turn back the clock. Coming out of North Little Rock High School, NSJ was considered to be the number one high school prospect coming into college. In high school, he was considered aggressive, confident, and a dynamic combo guard with a good size and long arms for the position. Offensively, he was considered an impressive combination as a playmaker and as a scorer, with his playmaking ability being unlocked by his aggressive and confident demeanor. Defensively, Smith consistently brought effort and energy on that end of the floor. His size, length, mentality, and high IQ made him an impact on and off the ball as a defender and making him tough, productive, and an impactful two-way player. These were things Arkansas fans were looking forward to in college, but a knee injury ended up limiting his season. While he still showed some of his brilliance for the Hogs, he was still limited in what he could do for Muss and Company. For the Razorbacks, the freshman posted 12 and a half points a game, just under two rebounds and two assists a game, and shot 37.6% from the floor. He took a high volume of shots, missed a few, but sometimes that's just how the ball bounces. Additionally, he shot 33.8% from three, and he's a confident three-point shooter, hitting three for four or just under that at 74%. Mock drafts before the injury consistently had Smith in the top seven picks in this year's draft. Since then, most mock drafts have had him sliding into the 10 to 15 range. Now headed into the NBA draft, could he be one of the biggest steals of the year? Let's look at the scouting report. First, what does Smith do well? Number one, he has a ton of speed. NSJ has both straight line speed and lateral quickness. He's also displayed these skills both with and without the ball. He has an explosive first step that makes him extremely difficult to guard from around the perimeter. Off the ball, he can use all his speed and make hard cuts right to the basket and creating easy layup opportunities for himself. Speed kills, and it's a skill that just can't be taught, and Nick Smith Jr. has it. Number two, Nick Smith has a wide range for his shot selection. NSJ has a rare ability to score from all over the floor. He has a strong mid-range shot, floater, and a three-point shot. What's become more of NSJ's signature shot is his floater or runner. Nick Smith's touch shot has been one of his most comfortable shots taking on a consistent basis. His floater was a major reason he was able to score 12 points a game this season for the Razorbacks, and he could often draw contact with the shot. Nick Smith has an acrobatic ability about him. He has an ability to be turned into an acrobat on his way to the basket and create shots for himself. Additionally, Nick Smith will be incredibly difficult to guard in the league if he can bring all of these tools to the table that he has. Third, Nick Smith has solid passing skills. He used to play point guard at times in high school. In the league, he's expected to be a shot guard, which gives him an ability to be a strong secondary playmaker. In addition, NSJ speed allows him to make passes on the drive while the defense is trying to rotate. This opens up additional scores and allows easy buckets or deep corner threes. So where does Nick Smith Jr. need to improve his game at? Well, one of the first things that's just glaring to you is his size, which thus also comes with a lack of strength. He has a smaller frame that can lead him to prefer to shy away from contacts at time. Smith only weighs roughly 185 pounds, and it's a small 185 at that. He stands out as one of the leaner players in comparison to everyone else on the floor. The trick for Smith is going to be how to put on enough muscle in the gym, gain a little weight, but not put on so much weight to where he sacrifices his elite speed. He has to find a happy medium to round out his game. Don't get me wrong here, but another concern for NSJ is his defense. 
Smith constantly gives the highest effort he can on the floor, but he has a tendency to get bullied around by larger players. Uh, Nick Smith will likely be used in the NBA as a player to guard less active guards around the perimeter. Um, but with his length, that's expected, but he's had trouble with this at times during college. Additionally, NSJ needs to learn not to pick up cheap fouls. Uh, we saw this several times at Arkansas. He needs to refine his hands on defense to clean up this area in his game. Now, this one isn't really a standard improvement, but it's something that you need to definitely keep in mind when it comes to Nick Smith. When it comes to the improvements on this list, it also needs to be clearly stated that we don't know the extent that Nick Smith was limited by the knee injury this season. These issues could have been a fundamental problem in his game, or alternatively, while he may have had some struggles in this area, the knee injury was amplified by these issues. So where's the floor and where's the ceiling for Nick Smith? The ceiling is the roof. NSJ could be an all-star, all-NBA type talent. He was highly sought after in high school and injuries were what may have held him back in college more than likely. The floor, though, is looking more into a rotation type player. It also could be a possibility that if the knee injury is a recurring issue throughout his career, we could also see a shortened career for Smith. Uh, really, only time can tell on this issue. The closest comparison to Nick Smith uh, from someone who's been in the league is either Jamal Crawford or Jordan Poole. Their games are very similar. So with NSJ falling into the tens and teens of this NBA draft, could he be one of the biggest steals this year? And who could be reaping those potential benefits? Well, first on my list, I have the Dallas Mavericks, but defense is what the Mavs really need, and this isn't necessarily Nick Smith's strongest suit. The OKC Thunder, on the other hand, make the most sense to me. They need a shot guard, Nick Smith fills that role, and he's also had an interview with, with them at the Combine. Third, the Toronto Raptors, but I don't know if they'll be taking a player in this spot. I, I suspect they're going to try to move up and try to get someone higher up in the draft. Fourth, New Orleans is a possibility, but it, it's really hard to tell exactly what New Orleans is thinking right now at this pick. I've also seen in other mock drafts, NSJ drop as low as 17 to someone like the Lakers. According to Hogsport, sources say that Oklahoma City and Utah are among the teams who have met with Nick Smith at the NBA Combine this year. It'll be very interesting to see where Nick Smith has his team workouts throughout between now and the NBA draft. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, again, please like and subscribe to the channel. We have more draft profiles coming up. Uh, next up is Kentucky's Case and Wallace. And if you're tired of seeing my ugly face on your screen talking about these draft profiles, Maddie is prepping her profiles right now for Noah Clowney, Gigi Jackson, and Jordan Walsh. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and I can't wait to see you next time.